on this episode of The Powers Project. Uh, the one thing I would spend money on to begin with is your podcast cover art. Uh, if you're not a designer, it's kind of like your book cover. And so I know a lot of people will judge a book by its cover. And the same thing goes with a podcast. If you have something that looks very amateur, people will assume that the podcast isn't serious, that the podcast is amateur. So that's something that I would spend a little bit of money on, assuming you're not a designer, to get right at the beginning. It doesn't have to be fancy or busy. It just needs to be clear. When people look on their phone, you know, these, these icons are, are super small, right? And right. so, you know, it's, it's, it needs to be something that stands out. It's simple um, that, that people can, can find you with. So, and, and is professional or at least gets across the level of professionalism or the vibe you want to get across. You know, maybe you're comedy, so maybe it's not professional, but it, it looks good, right? It doesn't look like someone just scribbled something on there. All right, Andrew, you're here today with me, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time out to to come. I was I was sort of afraid you weren't going to come on my show because you you had a I, I think some reservations of whether or not you would fit the you know the kind of show I have. But since my show is all over the place, I I <laughs> said uh, I think you'll be perfect. So I'm really glad that you agreed to uh, to come on today. Yeah, yeah. I think I have a number of listeners as as I I, I believe there's a there's a huge amount of people who want to get started in podcasting and yet don't know where to begin. They hear, you know, all this, you know, all this uh, misinformation, if you will, mm. about what to do, what they need to do. And they think that they need a, you know, a $10,000 setup or something like that. So I really wanted to have you on today being an expert in podcasting. And, uh, and actually um, the way I found you is that you have a website called podcastguest.com. And I've actually used your website to to uh, find guests for my podcast, and I've had some amazing guests on. Like, I, it just it runs the spectrum. So it's really amazing this thing that you came up with. I have to ask you, like, what made you what made you think about that? Yeah, well, so I, I'm a I'm a podcaster myself, and. Uh, as as a podcaster, I have a typical interview format, kind of like this podcast. And after doing it for about 50 weeks, I had so 50 episodes that kind of tapped my Rolodex, right? There, there weren't a whole lot of people on my niche topic that I knew of that I could invite onto the show that hadn't been on there before. And so uh, I started looking around for a way to find guests. And there are a number of agencies out there that will help you, but it's it's expensive. And I was looking for more of kind of a do-it-yourself platform. Couldn't find one. So I decided, hey, why don't I create my own? And that was the genesis of podcast guests. So how did you how did you find these guests? I mean, how did you reach out to where people said, hey, I'd like, you know, I would like to be guests on podcasts. What was... I guess what was the format that you used to to reach out to people? Right. So it's whenever you're trying to create kind of a two sided marketplace like that, like both guests and experts, it can be really challenging. Um, but what uh, the, the nice thing about podcasters is they're also guests at the same time, right? So you have a podcast, but you probably want to be a guest on other podcasts as well. And so you are able to, to do that. So really all I needed to do was bring in podcasters and say, hey, you can find guests for your show and you can also be a, a guest on other shows. And so I reached out via email at first to a number of podcasters and said, this is what I'm doing. I'd love to have you along for the initial ride here and, and we'll see if this works. And first I got maybe 100, 200 people to sign up before I started it. And it was uh, from the from the very first week starting it, people were getting matched. Uh, the, the podcasts that I featured were finding guests. And so I knew I was onto something and, and scaled it from there. Well, it's, and it's grown to what, over 20,000 users now? Yeah, as of uh, yesterday, 22,000. Wow. I mean, that's, and again, I, I was, I don't even know how I found it. I, I, I think I got an email and I don't even know how, if you found me, if I found you or whatever. But I was like, when I looked at the the list of guests that you had, I was going, there are some really interesting people on here. I, you know, like I had uh, Frank King, who was a comedy writer for mm. for Jay Leno for over twenty years, and who 
has done TED talks about, and, and he talks about suicide, you know, and, and, it was, and I was like, wow, a comedian and suicide, who would think? <laughs> and then, you know, I had, uh, you know, I had um, Catherine uh, Jansen Burkett, who is a psychotherapist who talks about, you know, who's really, she was an amazing guest and talking about how to help people, you know, or, you know, deal with what we're going through right now with this pandemic and being quarantined and stuff. And so she was great. And then I had, you know, someone like uh, Christopher Noel. So it's just who, who is a, a, a Bigfoot researcher who is, a, yeah. who is yeah. a, a, who, who is a philosopher and a teacher and he's a Bigfoot researcher. And yet, you know, so he doesn't fit the, you know, the, the norm of what people think big, big Bigfoot researchers are. So, you know, and, and, I've just had some really amazing guests from, from your, from your website. And I was like, wow, for you to find these people is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. As you mentioned, there, there's such a breadth, right? I mean, there's so many things that we're all interested in. And so to find people that are interested in these particular, you know, a, a niche, um, you know, I've got a former NFL player on there. I've got comedians, like you mentioned with Frank King, I have, uh, film producers, I have, you know, it, people that basically have all walks of life and every possible career you, you can think of, they're, they're in there. And in addition to the people that you're talking about that are in the directory, there are thousands of people that, that don't pay, so they're not in the actual directory, but they use the service. And, and when a podcast is featured in there, sometimes I'll get over 100 pitches to be on their show. And these are from people from really a, a really varied background. Really? So yeah, because I will tell you, and again, I, I I think it's important that you know the listeners understand that there there's a free version of this is what you, what I'm using, and I love it so much that I'm going to sign up for it because it's it's just again I I love the work that it that you've done with this, and and uh, and I think you're you're doing a great service for uh, for podcasters out there who 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 don't want to just interview their friends <laughs> at some point you run out. Yeah. Of yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're getting value out of it. You know, I, I felt like I would get value out of this system. So I assumed other people would, and you know, the numbers aren't lying, right? A lot of people are getting value out of it. I, I hear from people. So you're obviously right now coming mostly from the podcaster side, trying to find guests, but I hear from experts who are like, I've been booked on two dozen shows in the past year or two using your service. And so it's great to know that those connections are made. I mean, thousands of guest appearance have been established, originated on podcastguests.com. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit later because I, w I want to touch on a few things like how to become a guest on someone else's podcast, what the benefits are from that. And in particular, I'm going to talk about me. It sounds like okay. I guess. But uh, what, before we get on to that, I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, what got you into podcasts? You said you have your own podcast. And what's the name of your podcast? My podcast is the Domain Name Wire podcast. So it's about domain names. And uh, it's, it's a niche. <laughs> it, is a, it is a niche. It's, um, uh, you know, it's the industry is made up of people that buy and sell domain names and then companies like GoDaddy that help you get a domain name and establish a web presence. Uh, but, but you're right, it's a niche. And so I launched the podcast because I have a blog that I've been writing since 2005 about the industry. And let's see, so I'm up to, I just recorded episode 288 of the podcast. So five, six wow. years almost in. And uh, it's, it was really, I, I wanted a way to have more in-depth discussions with people. My blog posts are really short and I'll interview people and quote them in there. But I, I wanted something where you could really go in depth, have a good 20, 30 minute conversation. And blog posts aren't, aren't a good medium for that. And of course, podcasts, as most people listening know, they become more and more popular. And, you know, at the time I felt like I was a little bit late to start a podcast, but I ended up you know, a lot has happened in those past five, six years uh, and it shows that, that perhaps I wasn't. No, I would say uh, you were. I just started uh, December 7th was when I first aired this podcast and I'm 20 something episodes. So I can't wait to get to where you're at, where I'm in the 200s and, and beyond. And, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this develops. Sure. Uh, what I guess what yeah, you know, one of the things I love about podcasting because I had thought about writing a blog. the The trouble I had with that was, or the challenge I should say I had with that was, I hate writing. So I had these <laughs> in my head. I just didn't want to put them pen to paper because I just hate the act of writing. And I was like, 
And so then I thought about maybe doing a seminar or something of that nature. And then I discovered podcasts and I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is what I want to do. And, uh, and so it kind of fell into my lap and, and came, around, came along at the right time. And, uh, and again, because of you, it's made, because I think that was the biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle I, I saw in front of me is like, where do I find guests? And then when I found your website again, it was, you made it so easy for me that I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. So um, I can't say enough about your website and, and, you know, and what you've done for, for especially beginning podcasters like myself and how much, you know, your website's helped. So. Um, Good. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Let's talk about um, what are some of the things you should do when you first start podcasting because i know people think that everything has to be perfect and i'm of the opposite i believe that you know people are going to see me make a ton of mistakes and i believe that in a year from now they're going to see a lot less mistakes i might make new ones but they're not going to see the same old ones and i think they'll see you know how this how this podcast progresses and so i think there's a lot of people out there who think everything has to be perfect what do you, you know, what do you say or what suggestions do you have for people who, who want to start a podcast, but, you know, have one hang up or another, what would be your advice? Right. Right. Well, I would say, you know, perfection is the enemy of progress and you hit the nail on the head there. And I'll say my own story when I started my podcast was I, I tried to make it perfect before I even started. And, and that's really difficult to do because you don't yeah. know how it's going to work and how it's going to, to evolve. And so, uh, as an example, I hired someone to do a voiceover for to, to introduce me on the show. And that's really, you can certainly do that. A lot of people do it, but it's not necessary, especially at first. Um, I evaluated all the sound equipment that I would need for it to pick something, whereas really to get started, you can start, as long as you have a, a decent external mic that you can buy for about $50, uh, you, you're fine. And you can even... You know, I have some sound baffling and such behind me now, but if you just go into a walk-in clothing closet, the, the clothes absorb the sound and it sounds great. It's good enough to get yeah. started. So I think that you, you want to get out there, get the basic pieces you need there. You need a hosting account for your podcast. Uh, you need to, a way to syndicate that to Apple Podcasts and the other networks. Now, when you uh, talk about the hosting, uh, the hosting uh, uh, part of it, you're talking about like uh, Podbean and Lipson and, and those. Kinds exactly. Of, okay. Exactly. Like and these okay. services are inexpensive They're you know, you can get started right. for five or $10 a month. Some of them are probably free to start. Uh, the one thing I would spend money on to begin with is your podcast cover art. Uh, if you're not a designer, it's kind of like your book cover. And so I know a lot of people will judge a book by its cover and the same thing goes with a podcast. If you have something that looks very amateur, people will assume that the podcast isn't serious, that the podcast is amateur. So that's something that I would spend a little bit of money on, assuming you're not a designer to get right at the beginning. It doesn't have to be fancy or busy. It just needs to be clear. When people look on their phone, you know, these, these icons are, are super small, right? And right. so you know, it's, it's, it needs to be something that stands out. It's simple, um, that, that people can, can find you with. So, and, and is professional or at least gets across the level of professionalism or the vibe you want to get across, you know, maybe you're comedy. So maybe it's not professional, but it, it looks good, right? It doesn't look like someone just scribbled something on there. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I would say just kind of get it out there, get started and, and see where it goes. You can always make a big course correction. I th yeah, because I think, again, the listeners, the people who come in and listen to you and, and they start listening to your first episodes and then your later episodes, they'll actually appreciate the growth that you've had and, and almost feel like they've been part of it and they've been along for the ride. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and again, that, I, that organic of it, you know, I think people really appreciate because then they feel like they're part of it, you know, not just something that's been polished and they step, you know, then they came about when everyone else came about and found it, but they were actually there for the beginning and saw you struggling <laughs> in the beginning. And I think that, you know, there's, again, there's that appreciation that people have for, for that and realize that 
you didn't start off with, you know, a, a bankroll and all the perfect equipment and all the perfect sound and everything and that you, you worked your way up. So what are the, what would you say are, are some of the top mistakes that you see beginning, especially beginning podcasters make, and maybe even podcasters that have been on for a while that you see that they, that, you know, there's still mistakes out there that they continue to make. Sure. You know, and, and we've already addressed one of those, right? Which is trying to be perfect out, yeah. out of the get go. I, th I think it's good to, it's better to get something out there than nothing at all and wait six months, right? And, and not get anything out there. So uh, sound, sound quality is one. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect, but you can get 90% of the way there by doing a few simple things. And so uh, paying a little bit for a microphone and getting a headset on Zoom, I, I found you don't always need a headset, but sometimes when you're recording over Skype or something like that, you'll get an echo going through because each, each person's audio feed is picking it up, like this mic is picking you up. Right. Um, so I, I do recommend wearing earbuds, especially if you're just doing an audio podcast. Um, and then, you know, there are some simple things going into a walk-in clothing closet. You can buy some of these things on Amazon for just a dollar to each and put them around your microphone to keep from getting uh, bounce off of the walls and, and that sort of thing. Um, I also see people that are, uh, they're, they're maybe a little too choosy in how they, who they have come on their podcast at first. Uh, I know everyone wants to have these superstars thinking it'll help grow the show, but it's, it's, good, it's good to start with people that are a little bit more forgiving, right? And also sometimes the, I don't want to use the term smaller, but the less famous guests will do more to help promote your show. Right. Um, so after they come on, they'll, they'll promote it more on social media than the famous people who don't really feel like they get much out of it. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, you don't need to aim too high there. Aim, aim to get people on. You can work out the kinks as you go there. Um, other things, you know, there, there's, there's a two way street. The guest needs to be prepared, but you need to be prepared as a host too. And, and you need to make the guest be prepared. And the way you do that is you send them all the information I'll need ahead of time. For example, how are you going to record it? What sort of microphone setup should they have? Because both people need to have a decent one in, in order to get the good sound quality. And, you know, I remind people to do it from a quiet place. There are times you will get on and someone's in a busy place at a coffee shop or something like that, ready to record a podcast. Oh, really? Which is bad news. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I, I, I've seen a lot at the airport, calling in from the airport. So, um, you know, I, I would say those are some of the, the bigger mistakes, but you really let off with what I think is the biggest one. I mean, some people are like, I'm going to get 20 episodes ready and launch with 20 episodes because I read somewhere that's the way to do it and you'll get better Apple rankings right, and that yeah. sort of stuff. Just get, get your first couple episodes out there. You know, it might be good to have two or three at launch just because then if someone listens to it and likes it, they can pick up the second one. And the third one, and there's more to listen to, but I, I just get it out there and see what the reaction is and then build from there. And another thing is I would say some podcasters set the wrong expectations and that can be, there are an awful lot of podcasts that stop publishing before 10 episodes are published because the people think it's just going to go viral right away. Oh yeah. And so I would set your expectations low. And then hopefully exceed them over time. But podcasting is a is a slow build when it comes to audience. It's not like putting a a a blog post up that gets picked up on Reddit, and all of a sudden you have you know a hundred thousand people, right? It's more of a slow build, but it's also what's nice about that is that you have that audience for longer, right? They're not just flying by; they're not clicking by, if you will, looking at one story and leaving forever. Hopefully they're subscribing and coming back week after week or however often you publish your podcast. Um, that is one other piece of advice. I, I generally think it's good to publish on the same date and same time, like a, a regular schedule. So okay. for most people, that's going to be weekly, but I do mine at Monday at 8.30 Pacific time. And unless it's a holiday, it comes out at the same time and same day every week. I think it helps the podcast apps know when to go retrieve your podcast, but it also helps listeners who a lot of them will work the podcast into their routine, which our routines are kind of blown apart right now, given the pandemic. But 
you know, some people are like, yeah, I'll listen to Andrew's podcast every Monday afternoon on the way home from work. And right. so then if you're delivering on Tuesday one week and Thursday, it kind of messes up that routine. Yes. I, yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, a couple things you had mentioned. One was, you know, I've, I've always been bold. And so I've reached out to guests that I go, you know, most people go, oh, who do you think you are that you could reach out to these people? you know, that, that they would even think about coming on your show. And I go, well, you don't know unless you ask, you know, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've reached out. What's, what's the worst can happen? They say no. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Um, you know, and, but the funny thing that I found, because you were talking about, you know, don't have these high expectations and you don't have to. And I, and I agree, like I, but what I found is that the people who I've reached out to who are, who are relatively famous uh, if, if, in no other area except their own area, um, <laughs> they've been, they will respond to me and they'll, you know, one way or the other, whether they say yes or no, but they'll say, yeah, thank you, but I'm not doing interviews at this time or, or whatever it might be. Or, you know, they're, they, maybe they're just shooting me down in a nice way without saying, yeah, you're too small for me or whatever, but they'll respond. And what I found was, is that when you reach out to smaller people, because they have a, maybe a higher listenership than you, you know, by a couple thousand, they, they won't even respond to you as if somehow oh. you know, you're too small for them. And I'm going, you know, you would expect it to be the other way around, but it's not. It's like the people who, who tend to be more famous will at least reach out and, and say, thank you, but, uh, you know, we're busy or, or whatever it might be, or, or actually come on the show. And then when you reach out to these, uh, these smaller, you know, these people with smaller audiences, because they have more than you, they're like, oh, I'm only, you know, I'm only doing interviews with people who have higher audiences, I guess. I, mm. I'm not sure. So I found that. To well, be the, well, that, that brings up another point and, and I'll, I'll switch briefly to the guest side of the equation is as a guest, I would suggest not being too picky, right? I mean, you, you want to make sure it's a fit, but I would rather sit, you know, being on a podcast, it's kind of like sitting in front of an auditorium full of people that are listening to a talk, right? So maybe this is like a fireside chat between the two of us. And, I'd rather sit in front of an auditorium of a couple hundred people that are very relevant and interested right. in my topic than I would sitting in front of, you know, a, a, a baseball stadium full of people that don't really care. Right. And so I, I would recommend not being too choosy as a guest. I mean, choose, choose based on a relevancy more than the size of the audience. And also understand that a podcast that's not very popular right now might become popular. And then people go and they listen to the catalog of the old episodes. So it might be a way to get onto a show that might not be big now, but becomes big over the next year or two. Well, that's what I, <laughs> I sit there and go, all right, one day when I'm as big as Joe Rogan, you're going to wish you had been on my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and then you say, oh, that was a mistake not to go on his podcast. <laughs> so, um, but, but, you know, you also, I mean, yeah, it's one of those things not to take personally. I mean, if uh, someone... Yeah. And you know, I, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's easy to, I mean, at first I could go, well, why did these people at least, you know, at least say, uh, thanks, but no thanks. That's all, you know, to me, if someone invited me on their show, I would sit there. And if I didn't want to be on their show, I'd say, thanks. I can't do it at this time, or I'm not doing it at this time, but I would respond. I mean, that's just the professional thing to do, at mm -hmm. least in my opinion. So, and so I don't take it personally. But then again, it's hard to not forget about the time when you ask them to come on. And if you get bigger and then they want to be on your show, and you're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see. Right. Right. Um, so as a podcaster, what, is, what are some of the things you can do to gain listeners? Now, you just mentioned, you know, being, uh, being on other podcaster shows, being a guest on their show. What are some other things that you can do to gain listeners? Yeah, so let me explain a little bit kind of the, the difference between growing audience on a podcast as opposed to a, a blog or, or some other medium. It, it is a, it, it's more difficult because everyone uses the web, right? Everyone will go to a website. A smaller subset of the population really listens to podcasts on a regular basis. Let's call it 20%. And so, and there's no, there's, so Google and Apple are getting better about understanding what's in an actual podcast episode to, to surface it, to, to make people aware of content and podcasts that they might be interested in, but it's still nowhere near like Google search for content. And so 
it's not as simple as just putting a podcast out there and hoping that Google indexes it and people are searching for the keywords. You also can't go buy like Google AdWords, pay-per-click type stuff for it. So there is a, a lot more elbow grease, I believe, to building a podcast than anything else. And the one thing we've talked about so far is the number one thing you can do, which is to be a guest on other podcasts. Because then you're, you're reaching that 20% of people that already listen to podcasts. You're not, you're not advertising or promoting yourself into a void of people that might like what you have to say, but they're never going to come listen to you. Right. Because they're they're just not that's not their media of choice a medium of choice so um, that's a good thing if you can advertise on other podcasts or or do a mention swap where you say hey will you mention my domain name wire podcast on your show about uh, internet technology and 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 vice versa that if another avenue of getting whether you have a YouTube channel you do have a website and in social media to push out your episodes that's really big okay. and here's where not just go ahead i'm sorry you kind of broke up a little bit that's one of the that's one of the downfalls of doing zoom <laughs> but, uh, right yeah the video that. bandwidth you, this is a little bit challenging yeah you said something very important daddy i don't think it came through you were talking about youtube would you repeat that again yeah saying so, you know if you have a youtube channel you can use that to promote the podcast uh, you can even do what I believe you do, which is publish on both YouTube and audio yeah. through like Apple Podcasts. Social media also is, is a big thing to do. And then another way to grow your podcast, it's not just being a guest on other podcasts, it's having good guests on your show that will help promote the episode they're on. And so when they go share it with their social media accounts or their email newsletter or mention it somewhere else, that helps you build your audience. So you know, the biggest things are being a guest on other podcasts and having good guests on your show uh, that will help spread the word. But then there are some, some other smaller things you can do promoting it to your audience that hopefully exists already or that you're building LinkedIn, that sort of thing um, are, are good ways as well to promote. And the thing that you, that you said that is most important is relevancy, both for the podcaster and for the guests is making sure as a podcaster that, you know, again, if I, if I know my audience doesn't care about starting a podcast, if my listeners, you know, this isn't something that would interest them, having you on my show would, would garner no, you know, no downloads whatsoever. I know that my listeners are interested in this. And so having you as a guest was a perfect fit for me. So I, you know, I, again, I appreciate you coming on. Right. Um, so, Okay, seeing our internet connections unstable. Let's see here. I think we're still yeah. okay. Good. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think the relevancy of of the of having the guest and also of who you who you choose to be a guest of is of utmost importance. Like you like you said, I think that's more important than probably anything else as far as who you choose to have on your show. Yeah, relevancy over size. And they don't have to be the exact topic. You know, I think sometimes going a little bit out of your normal topic zone to bring in a new audience uh, is a good thing, right? Right. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be a perfect fit. So my blog is about domain names, but having someone come on and talk about a website builder or internet security, that sort of thing is also relevant to them. Right, exactly. All right, so let's go on to the next thing, which you know is going to probably be the next popular question is, how do you monetize your podcast? So a lot of people start a podcast with this idea that they're going to be like Joe Rogan, who just right. <laughs> cashed in over $100 million, or Pat exactly. Flynn, who's, who's very successful, gets a lot of downloads. Yeah, I'm waiting um, for that call from Spotify any day now. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The... Here, here's the thing. The median podcast gets, or, or a podcast, the median number of downloads per episode is fewer than 200. So there are a lot of small podcasts out there and getting an advertiser for a show of that size is, is extremely difficult. It's not worth the advertiser's time unless it's an extremely targeted audience. Um, and so I don't think the, the traditional ad model is a good model to have when you first start your podcast. And I would look at some other benefits that you get from it rather than just the pure dollars and cents of, of monetizing an episode. Uh, one big benefit to podcasting is you get to have conversations with people that otherwise might not give you the time. And so if I were to call up the CEO of a public company and say, hey, 
I like uh, 20 minutes of your time because I want to learn about something that you're an expert in. They're going to, you know, probably brush you off, right? They've got a lot of other stuff to do. But if you call them up and say, I'd like to have you on my podcast so you can share your expertise with my audience, then all of a sudden you're offering them something and you're helping them with something. And then it gives you a connection, a person that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to, to talk with. And, and it gives you that option right there. Uh, the other thing to do is it, it does build your own audience. People will become familiar with you as we talk about personal branding and building your own influence. Having a podcast is a great way to do that. Uh, I like to look at it as part of an overall package. In, in my case, it's not just podcasting, right? It's a website and they, they feed into each other. Certain people like to consume the content audibly. Other people like to read content. And this way I'm able to, to capture everyone there. But again, you know, I have, I have sponsors for my podcast, but they're kind of sponsoring my website as well most of the time. Um, you know, mine gets 1,500 to 2,000 downloads per episode, so it's not, um, you know, that'd be hard to go sell on a traditional CPM model, and they need to be highly targeted. I, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to go get a lot of these, um, these direct-to-consumer like Casper mattress and stuff. You know, how many people are actually going to buy a mattress based on a promo on a domain name show, right? It just doesn't make sense. So I have highly targeted advertisers that are trying to reach the one to 2,000 people that listen to my podcast. I, one of the things I've done is I've actually uh, searched out for affiliates. And, I, and for instance, I have one company. It's called intakebreathing.com. And what I do, is just like with my guests, I look for a fit for me. Since I've been in the uh, health and fitness world for over 30 years, I look for things that can benefit us uh, you know, health-wise. And uh, I found this company who, who created this amazing strip that, uh, that opens up your nasal passageways, and it actually prevents people from snoring. I was like, oh, this is a godsend for me. <laughs> so, um, but I, you know, I had them as an affiliate. And so there's no money out of their pocket unless, you know, uh, my listeners happen to purchase by using, you know, my promo code and, and it's a win-win for both of us. And so I think that, you know, by going the route of affiliates rather than like you said, with sponsors, because people aren't, they're not going to, it's not worth it to them to, to pay you to put, you know, to, to talk about their product if you don't have a very large listenership yet. So that might be another avenue that people can take as far as that goes. That's a great point. I mean, a lot of the podcast advertisers like Casper are, are direct response and they're, they're measuring it. Yes, they're paying advertisers up front, but if they aren't getting that return that they would get on, say, an affiliate, they're going to drop that podcaster anyway. And so right. affiliate programs give you access to a lot of big companies without – striking up a one-on-one -on -one advertising relationship yeah and and again like i said it, it's it's a win-win for both because you know my listeners purchase it and obviously i receive something for it and they don't have any out of expense marketing uh cost to them unless you know people right. actually buy it so um i think it's so have you have you sold any yet Actually, I have, yeah. And All I, right. The, the, the funny thing is, is I haven't even, because I just, I, we just nailed it down as far as the specifics of, of uh, what we're going to do. And so I have, mm -hmm. your podcast is going to be the first one that I actually put it up with, with, but I had told other people about it and everybody wanted to know about it because, you know, especially when you get older, if you put any weight on, whether you're muscular or whether it's fat or whatever, it will, it will, you know, it, that weight will will interfere with your breathing. And so we become mouth breathers. And so with this strip, it opens up your nasal passageway to where you breathe through your nose and you don't breathe through your mouth. And that's why you mm -hmm. don't snore anymore. And so I, I've had several clients who, who asked me about it because I will normally wear it during the day. I didn't want to wear it during this podcast and it, it was <laughs> like I'm trying to push it. But the truth is I will wear it during the day because when I lift weights or when I do my cardio or anything, it makes it so much easier. So with a little play right. and take breathing.com. Um, so let's talk about uh, what is the best. So here's my dilemma. I, I'm going to ask you, what is the best way to get booked as a guest on other mm -hmm. podcasts and what are the benefits? I'll ask you that first and then I'll ask you a personal question. <laughs> so Sure. Um, so I, I'd say the, first of all, lead with how you can help the podcaster rather than, 
hey, I'm so awesome. Look at me. I'm an expert. Invite me on your show. Lead with how you can help them. So I always recommend uh, pitching yourself as, hey, here's what I can teach your audience and including anything personal in that pitch, like I listened to one of your episodes and learned this is helpful. Um, and, and, and tell them how you'll promote the show once it goes live too. That, that's a big one so that they know that they're getting something out of it. You'll want to create what's called a one sheet. And this is something that uh, it's like a one page pitch for yourself. And it's one of the things that actually built into podcastguest.com is an online one sheet that you can share with people that has your you know, information about you, topics you can cover, links to other coverage podcasts you've been in, that sort of thing. Um, I put together a, a guide that talks a little bit how to get booked on podcasts, but also the technical side and stuff. Uh, and it's, it's free. I don't even ask for your email address. I just want people to be better at this. And you can get that at podcastguests.com slash guide. And it kind of walks you through some of these steps. Uh, but I, I would say the key thing is to focus on, you know, what's in it for them. What's in it for the podcaster by having you on the show. And okay. So now I, I, I'll, I'll ask my personal question. So I'm an expert. If you, you know, if, if there ever is such thing as an expert in any area, but I would be considered an expert in the health and fitness field and in uh, Jeet mm -hmm. Kune Do mixed martial arts. However, having done this for over 30 years, the topics bore me. And so I really don't want to, I don't want to talk about those things. I want to talk about things like, you know, the, the topics we're not supposed to talk about, like politics and religion, for instance. And I, and I feel like I'm well versed in both of those areas. I would never consider myself an expert in them by any means. Yeah. I feel like be, uh, I have a, because of my podcast, because, you know, uh, this uh, mindset that I have, of always challenging our beliefs, challenging our perceptions, because when we do that, we can see if they actually hold water or not. So I look at things from different perspectives. And because I do that, I've learned a great deal more than I ever, ever knew about both of those topics or, or any topic that I, I tend to do research on, because I look at both sides. And those are the topics that I would like to be a guest on other people's podcasts for not about health and fitness. I don't want to talk about, you know, the, the best workout routines or the best, you know, diets or the best nutritional, you know, uh, supplements or things of that nature. I, cause I, I would just, that, that things it's been talked to death, at least by me. So I would love to talk about something I find interesting. And that's why I wanted to do my podcast because I can choose the topics I want to talk about, you know, starting a podcast is a topic I want to talk about because I know there's a great deal of interest out there. Talking about Bigfoot was a topic I wanted to talk about. And I came away because I was skeptical but not cynical. I came away with a different insight into Bigfoot. <laughs> but that's what happens when you keep an open mind rather than being cynical about everything. So how do I become a right. guest on someone's podcast without claiming to be an expert in something that I know I'm not? Right. Or can, or can right. I? <laughs> so. Well, that's one thing. You're an expert because you call yourself an expert, right? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, some of us who, who suffer from um, uh, oh, imposter syndrome, you know, right. it's, a, it's a little bit difficult to, to put yourself out there as an expert. Um, so I'd say, first of all, like saying, oh, I want to talk about politics. It's really broad, right? Or religion, right. it's really broad. I encourage people to focus on a subset of that because you can become an expert on a narrower topic in a faster amount of time. Okay. Uh, and, you know, people, you know, I, I tell this to like entrepreneurs, right? There are a million entrepreneur podcasts. Um, but, you know, if you just say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, have me on your show, that doesn't do much. So you want to really focus on something specific. And I think that if there were a particular aspect of politics or religion um, that you would want to cover, I would kind of focus there. And then you can go broader over time. What you need to do is get booked on a podcast or two. And then you use those to leverage to get on other ones. So you put that on your one sheet. Oh, I've been on the XYZ podcast and ABC podcast talking about this particular, about religion in general. Let's just say that. So you start yeah. broadening and then you can get on a lot more podcasts and you become, you become, you, you have that social proof once you've been on other podcasts, that sort of thing. Everyone has an opinion on politics, right? Everyone has an opinion on right. religion. 
if they don't, that's their opinion on religion. Right. right? So <laughs> everyone has an opinion on it and, um, and opinions are a dime a dozen. So you're right. You do need to kind of start building yourself up with some credibility there. And to the extent you've either been on other podcasts or you've given a talk at a university or college, you know, it doesn't have to be Harvard. You know, it, it can be any sort of thing. You, you use those, you start small and you start building and building and building to when you can genuinely say that you're an expert on those topics. Now, most people pick a topic that also gives them some sort of benefit. You might benefit just emotionally uh, and, and personally from talking about religion and politics. Um, for other, other people, it hurts them emotionally. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do encourage guests to think about what's your, what's your goal here? Even though you're pitching yourself as, I want to help your audience and I, I want to help you, what is your goal from being on podcasts? You know, for most people, they don't want to just spend an hour of their time talking just for the sake of it. And... Um, so, so think about that and think about what your objectives are and then work from there on, okay, I will talk about this topic or I won't talk about this topic. I know this is going to probably sound cheesy, but honest to God, my purpose is to get people to think outside the box. It really, mm -hmm. I go, you know, if people would just do that, we would be in a much better place than we are right now. Instead of being so tied down to one belief or another and, you know, whatever it is, whether it's religion or politics, we become so divided that, you know, because we're, we refuse to look at the other side at all. And, uh, and I just, I, you know, I have a very good life. I mean, honestly, and I, and I tell people this all the time. I, you know, I have the best health care you can have. I'm not an immigrant. I, I, you know, I don't have college debt to pay for. I, you know, I don't suffer from any of these things that, that a lot of people suffer from, but I have enough empathy for others to want better for them. And so if I can, if I can help people, and again, again <laughs> this is going to sound cheesy as hell, but if I can help people come together and just look at each other's side, instead of just, you know, being divided the whole time, that is truly my purpose. And what sure. I, my podcast, Absolutely. But I want to do it having fun as well. I mean, I want it to be entertaining. I want it to be fun. So I, I don't want to, you know, just, uh, be all right. spiritual and 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 uh, serious all the time. I, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that, that, that's a perfect objective there. And, and you know, for for most people, they want to build their own personal audience or brand or their company's you know brand and that sort of thing. And that's part of it. Um, like you know, for example, coming on here, it's great. I can get more people interested in podcasting, which is something I care about and I appreciate that. Of course, it also, you know, hopefully they'll use my service, whether it's for free or paid at some point down the road. I'm not going to, you know, sell, 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 right? Because then you would never have me back on it, no, no anyone else. But having an objective of, hey, I just want to help the world. You know, I want to get people to see things differently. That's great. And then you can run with that objective. And in fact, it's kind of, I, I suppose that's fairly common in politics, not what you see on TV. Everyone's trying to sell themselves, right? And it's all about them. But I imagine that's much more, uh, in both politics and religion, that's a much more common objective than you find in, say, a business podcast or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's perfectly fine, and that's good. And, and again, I would, you, you just need to get a little on, on a couple things. You can build your credibility when it comes to that, and then you can kind of go broader. One of the things you said a few minutes ago, which I picked up on, and I was like, see, that's what I love about you and your, and your website proves that is that you said, I just want to help podcasters become better. And to me, that's a, you know, an altruistic, you know, reason that um, motive, if you will, I, to, to help people become better podcasters. And, and, and I think because of that, you know, your site will, you know, continue to grow and progress. And, and uh, because I think it comes from a good place, you know, it's not just about how much money can you make. Because again, you know, it, it, as the cliche mm. goes, do what you love and the money will follow. And, and I think that's what you're doing. I, and I know that's what I'm doing because I would. I would do this if I never make a dime at this. I would do this because if nothing else, I'd love to talk. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm doing. I'm no, it's, 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 it's very true. And, and you do what you do. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, then it, it's, it's just not going to work. It's going to show. You know, I have main names and originally it was just for fun. And then it became a business because people wanted to, to advertise on that blog. 
but I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. If I wasn't thoroughly interested in the topic, it, it would show, right? It would, it would show <laughs> in my writing and, and my speaking as it comes to the, to the podcast. And so I think you really need to, at a minimum, you need to care and be passionate about what you're doing. Uh, you know, whether your underlying motive is profit or uh, importance or getting across a viewpoint, you know, those are all things that everyone has underlying with their, with their personality and their, their motivation. Um, but it's, it helps so much to care about what you're doing. If you don't care, people will know. Right. I, yeah, absolutely agree with you. I know that you, we, we've, you've got, um, you've got to go here soon. So I just have a couple more oh, yeah. questions for you. Um, and I, sure. you know, I appreciate you taking your time out of your day to, to spend with us. Um, what do you say to people who say podcasting is oversaturated with podcasts mm. now? You know, there's millions or, or I forget how many, how many podcasts are out there now. And they're saying, oh, you, you've jumped on the bandwagon too late, if, if you will. Mm. Well, you know, is it too late to start a blog? Was it too late to start a blog 10 years ago <laughs> when there are already lots of blogs out there? I would say no. Um, and so, you know, there may be a million active podcasts out there or something along those lines. And so I would say there's still opportunities out there. And, you know, I, I won't lie, podcasting is more work than writing a blog post. As you mentioned, for you, you enjoy this format more, but let's face it, it takes longer. You have to record this. You've got to, you know, do some basic editing, at least on the front end, the back end. You've got to upload it, all that sort of stuff or, or pay someone to do that. Right. It's a bit more work, but yeah, I definitely don't think it's saturated. I still think there are opportunities. It's still early days. I mean, more and more people are learning about and listening to podcasts. So, you know, I think we'll look back on this time, look back to 2020 and say, I was actually pretty early in the game. Yeah. And so I, I wouldn't let that stop you from, from starting a podcast. So my last question to me is what do you see the, for the future for podcasting? And apparently it, it, you see growth in, in the, or continual growth in the future. I do. Um, you know, it's, it's been interesting. So the pandemic has changed listening habits. Uh, listening to podcasts is very habitual. Like I said earlier, some people have, you know, they block off, oh, my train ride home from work or my bus ride. I'm going to listen to this on this day and that day and that sort of thing. It kind of upended that a little bit. And so there was actually a dip in listenership for a while that's, that has started to recover. Um, and it was really around, you know, people working it into their new reality, right, and their, and their new schedule. Um, I saw a surge in a number of people looking to either be a guest on podcasts or have guests on their show when the pandemic hit. And I, I chalked that up to uh, people trying to figure out well, what can I do from home to a interact with people, sorry, a interact with people. And two, for those that are used to marketing themselves from going to trade shows, uh, um, conferences, that sort of thing, or in person, how do you do that when you can't leave the house when you can't go do it face to face. Right. And so I, I think there, there's actually been a bump that will show very much. So to say 12, 24 months from now in podcasting and I think it's a growing medium. You know, when people hear these stories about, you know, a podcaster getting paid a hundred million dollars plus to sell their podcast to Spotify, people are like, Oh, I, I should look into this, right? I should see what this is all about. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then it, it, it grows from there. So. I will tell you that one of the most interesting things I have found is that when I go and I look at the statistics on my podcast and I see week after week, I have listeners all over the world, like I have three in Norway and two in Spain and, and mm. 12 in England or, or one in Australia. And I'm like, it, it just amazes me that people from all around the world can find my little podcast somehow. I don't know how they found it, but they found it. And, and they, they stay because week after week they're there. And I think that's so cool that somebody you know, in these different countries around the world is listening to my little podcast right now. And I, I, there's just something – you know, very it, it, just yeah. think about it that, you know, that you have, you have people who care about what you say halfway on the other side of the world. So, uh, you know, I mean, the internet is, I mean, we take it for granted, right? And, right. and the, the, the pandemic has taught, I think a lot of us not to take for granted things we used to. Um, and so, you know, don't take the internet for granted. It's pretty, pretty freaking cool that, you know, like you said, that someone's, 
you know, cares about what you say from Australia and from Norway and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, well, Andrew, thank you so much again for, for being on the show. I, I can't tell you, you know, that I appreciate you enough because I, again, I know that this is important to a lot of people because I know a lot of people out there who are, you know, who are thinking about, or at least thought about starting a podcast. And I think you've, you've, uh, help them overcome maybe some of those fears of what it would, what they think they need to do in order to start a podcast and, and the fact that it's not too late. So, (laughs) so thanks again for your time. I appreciate it. My my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on the show. I appreciate it. Well, good luck with everything in the future. And, uh, and again, that's uh, podcastguest.com, correct? Yes. Plural on guests. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll have provide your links below on both uh, my YouTube channel and uh, on the uh, podcast itself. So thank you. Perfect. And everybody, thank you for joining us today. And until next time, take care.